The formal entrance is this meeting is being held pursuant to and compliance with ordinance number 20-A, parentheses 16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. I'll officially uh, call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. I'd like to uh, welcome Brian Mason as a very new member. Welcome, Brian. I think you're here on my screen anyway. I thought I was. I'm maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Okay. Uh, hopefully, he'll join us. Uh, welcome to uh, 2021 and our uh, first meeting of this calendar year. We have a uh, agenda primarily oriented around the Pantops Overlook Hotel community meeting. We may be having some uh, community members in the local area joining us, residents joining us. We'll have an update on the community development uh, in the projects in the Pantops area by Cameron. And then uh, B, thank you, you're here. You're on the agenda for comments you would like to make. And I think we also have Corey here. Yes, for any comments at the end that you'd like to make, Corey. I don't see Brian yet, okay. Let's start with the adoption of the minutes for our October 27th meeting. A copy was sent out, I believe, recently. Are there any additions, corrections, or whatever? Um, Dick, Dick I Olivia, the, I'm sorry, you go ahead, me. Cal. No, no, go. I, I just found them very, very good. I thought the acting secretary did a wonderful job, and <laughs> I was going to move for adoption. I second it. <laughs> there is there is one minor edit. Um, okay. Olivia was at the October meeting, but uh, her name wasn't in the minutes, so we were going to add Olivia as a oh, okay. Uh, okay. who was in attendance. Thank you. That's so I will amended. amend my a motion to say as amended. <laughs> so Adopt second. the minutes as amended. Changes, corrections, or additions. Okay, welcome, Brian. You're uh, our newest committee member. We're very happy to have you with us. Thank you, very, thank you very much. I've been having a little. I got a new computer, so I'm trying to get it up and and get familiar with it. So thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, fine. So welcome to our group. I have one short question. When I got your email address from B, it said Earthlink dot, and then it went off the end of the page. Is that dot net? That, it, that would be correct. Okay. Thank you much. <laughs> okay. The minutes have been uh, approved. Everybody in agreement, I hope. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll move on. Okay, I'd like to turn the meeting over to uh, Cameron for a community meeting on the Pantops Overlook Hotel, which has been proposed. Thanks, Dick. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope 2021 has gotten off to a good start for you all. And thank you for being here tonight at our CAC meeting. Um, so if you uh, notice on the agenda, we've got most of the meeting dedicated to this community meeting that we are holding for a um, zoning map amendment application that was recently submitted to the county for review. Um, this is a proposed hotel along Route 250. Um, the site is actually adjacent to the Rivanna Ridge Shopping Center, which is where the giant is located. Um, I have my colleague here with us tonight, Andy Reitelbach, and he has been the lead planner reviewing this application so far. So um, for this portion of the meeting, what we're going to do is Andy will do a presentation to, to give some basic info on the zoning map amendment process and some details about this proposal. 
and how it relates to the Pantops master plan. And then we will turn it over to um, Kelsey Schlein, who is representing the applicant. She will do a presentation for us to present more information. And when she's finished, then we'll enter into a question and answer period where you can ask questions um, of staff or the applicant. So um, right now, Andy, I'll turn it over to you and uh, you can begin your part. Thank you, Cameron. Um, good evening, everyone. As Cameron said, my name is Andy Reitelbach, and I am a senior planner here with Albemarle County Planning Division. Um, and I have been the uh, assigned as the lead reviewer of the zoning map amendment that was submitted for this hotel. So I'll give a brief presentation first, going through you know the reason behind why we're holding this community meeting, um, the zoning and the land use um, of this project and some of the basics of the timeline of review. And then as Cameron said, I'll turn it over to Kelsey Schlein, who is uh, representing the applicant. Um, so this project that has been submitted is known as the Pantops Overlook Hotel and the application number is ZMA 2020-13. Um, and just a brief review of uh, what a community meeting is, why we're here this evening. Um, and it's to share information about this proposed project in the development review process, including any relevant policies and regulations, as well as to solicit public input on the proposed project during the Q&A session. And then a summary of this input from the public is included in the staff report that is eventually provided to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors during the public hearings um, when we get to that step in the process. Um, so a brief overview of how development happens here in the county. Um, this is just a timeline and uh, a version of this is also available on the county website under the planning department's webpage if you'd like to look at it um, closer, more detail, showing um, the process from when an application is submitted through the review um, to the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors. And then if the Board of Supervisors approves that project, any future um, applications such as site design review, um, engineering review, that sort of thing. Um, and then this is an even more complicated a graphic showing um, in more detail the site review process. And like I said, this is also available on the county website um, if you'd like to look at it in more detail. Um, so first off, what is zoning? Um, most cities and counties have laws about what you can build and where. Um, and what a property owner can build depends on where or what zone their property is in. And the county uses zoning to group land into different areas to protect the safety, health, and welfare of its residents. Um, there are two main ways that the county zoning ordinance groups uh, development. The use of buildings such as residential uses, commercial uses, or institutional uses to separate, say, um, as the graphic shows, a house from a factory. Um, and then the other main way that the zoning ordinance uh, groups development is through the size and shape of the building, including height, square footage, um, the required setbacks for property lines, how far a building has to be from an adjacent property. Um, <coughs> such things as like the graphics show a single family home next to um, maybe a commercial building that could be tall. Um, the zoning ordinance dictates what can be done by right today. And so those developments um, go through an administrative review and approval process of submitting a site development plan to the county. Um, it's reviewed by certain reviewers such as VDOT, engineering, um, public utilities, the service authority to ensure that all um, ordinance requirements have been met. And if they are, that development is approved. Um, however, for the project that we have this evening, um, it is not able to be developed by right under the current zoning, and so that is why they've come through um, with a rezoning application. And then related to zoning, but different, is the comprehensive plan, and this is a document that applies um, to the whole county. It was uh, adopted by the Board of Supervisors and establishes a 20-year vision for the county um, identifying the policies and the recommendations for how best to use the land. Um, there, during the uh, development of this comprehensive plan, there was extensive engagement with community members um, prior to the public hearings and adoption by the Board of Supervisors. 
And then with the Albemarle County Comprehensive Plan, it has divided the county into smaller areas, each with their own master plans, such as Pantops, um, up the 29 corridor, the places 29 corridor, out in Crozet, uh, the 5th and Avon area south of Charlottesville, and then the village of Rivanna, which is um, east, of two, east on 250 around uh, Rivanna Village and the Glenmore developments. Um, so as I mentioned, each development area has a master plan, including Pantops. Um, and so sometimes the zoning that designates what can be developed by right and the future land use is identified in the master plan do not always line up. Um, and so that is why a rezoning may have to come in is to the Board of Supervisors to rezone a property to determine whether um, the request is maybe more in line with what the comprehensive plan or the master plan recommends. Um, and so when that happens, it goes through a legislative review process um, where Board of Supervisors approval is required. Um, and the application is reviewed by uh, many different agencies and bodies. So county staff, and then like I said, other outside agencies such as VDOT, the Service Authority, and a water and sewer authority review it and then it goes to the planning commission and that body reviews the plan and makes a recommendation to the board of supervisors and then the board of supervisors makes the final decision as to whether to approve or deny the request for the reason um, so as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, changing a property zoning to allow a different use from what is currently allowed by right is known as a rezoning or a zoning map amendment. Um, and the application for that is reviewed with um, consistency with the area's comprehensive plan, or the, I'm sorry, the area's future land use designation in the comprehensive plan and the Pantops master plan um, with all state and local standards and regulations. And for any properties that lie within a designated entrance corridor, they are also reviewed by the county's architectural review. Um, so for this project specifically, the Pantops Hotel. Um, it, of course, is located in the Pantops development area um, in the Pantops master plan. It is a property of approximately 2.7 acres there on um, Route 250. As Cameron said, it is just to the west of the Rivanna Ridge Shopping Center, which you can see in this aerial um, photo is to the bottom right. To the bottom left is the Carriage Hill um, condominium and apartment development. And then you can see some of the car dealerships along 250 up in the um, top left and top right of this photo. Um, what the applicant is proposing is they've submitted an application to rezone this parcel of land to amend the application plan to um, request allowing a 125 room hotel on the property. And then um, also it would be accessed just by a right in right out entrance off of Route 250. Um, so the zoning for this property is PDMC, which is planned development mixed commercial and it allows a wide range of commercial uses including hotels. Um, the proposed zoning is actually the same thing. The applicant is not proposing to amend the underlying zoning, but uh, because the zoning is a planned district, it requires what's known as an application plan. And the current application plan for this district does not um, permit a hotel in this area on this parcel. So the applicant has submitted this rezoning request um, to amend the application plan to allow for a hotel on this parcel. And the application plan depicts the conceptual layout of the site and its relation to the rest of the um, plan development mixed commercial district. And the right, the map to the right is the zoning map for this area. The purple burgundy color um, is the plan development mixed commercial of the Rivanna Ridge Shopping Center. And you can see the highlighted parcel is the subject parcel. Um, the red is highway commercial, which allows for a wide range of commercial uses. And then the brown in the uh, lower left-hand corner is um, zoned residential, and that's where the Carriage Hill um, community is. And then other notable site factors to acknowledge on this site is that it is located within the entrance corridor and requires review by the Architectural Review Board. And then there are also managed steep slopes on this property. 
Um, and then the future land use as recommended in the Pantops master plan, it's actually, um, there are two recommended <laughs> land uses on this parcel. The brownish color um, in the front, really, most of the property there um, along 250. Um, the brown is community mixed use, which recommends retail, commercial, office uses, hotels and conference centers, institutional uses such as schools, um, and residential at its density of six to 34 units per acre. And then the very rear of this parcel, um, right adjacent to the Carriage Hill community, which is in green on the map to the right, is designated for parks and green systems. And parks and green systems recommends um, natural areas and open space. And then also in the Pantops master plan, this property is on the very edge of one of the designated urban centers, which is the Rivanna Ridge Shopping Center. Um, so just a brief timeline, the staff review of this proposal is currently ongoing. Um, the community meeting, which is a required part of the review is of course this evening. And then it will require two public hearings, one with the planning commission and that body, as I mentioned earlier, will make a recommendation to the board of supervisors. And then there will be a second public hearing with the board of supervisors and they make the final decision um, as to whether to approve or deny the applicant's request for this rezoning. Um, and neither of those uh, public hearings, which are um, open to the public and do allow for public comment, neither of those is currently scheduled at this time. Um, however, if you'd like to be put on a contact list to remain updated as this project moves through the review process, and um, once the public hearings are scheduled and we do um, know of the date when they will go before the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors, uh, I'd be happy to put you on a contact list. My email is down at the bottom of this screen. Um, and actually, let me go on to the last slide um, with my name, my email address, and my phone number. And you're welcome to contact me. Um, by either of those ways, email is usually better. And if you would like to be put on the contact list to uh, keep updated on the status of this project, um, you can just send me an email and I'd be happy to go ahead and add you to that list. Um, that's everything I have for this evening. So now I'll turn it over to Kelsey Schlein and she is a representative for um, the applicant who submitted this application. Thank you. Hi everyone, Andy, thank you so much for that presentation. I'm just going to share my screen with you all. Okay, can everyone see that and hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so my name is Kelsey Schlein, I'm a planner with Schiff Engineering, and I'm the project representative for the rezoning portion of the Overlook Hotel. I'm here tonight representing the property owner, WS4 LLC. Uh, and also here with me tonight is Doug Ellis with WS4 LLC. Um, and so he is also available to answer any questions uh, that may come up about the proposal. Um, so as Andy said, this is a proposal for a four-story hotel uh, with a maximum of 125 rooms on this 2.7 acre parcel here adjacent to the SunTrust Bank um, and a portion of which is adjacent to the auto superstore on Route 250. Um, so we're pursuing a rezoning on the property to amend the approved application plan that was originally approved in 1998 and revised in 2002. Uh, so as uh, and Andy spoke to you, this is a planned development district. So this 50 acres that you see outlined in red was holistically rezoned back in 1998 to plan development mixed commercial, which allows for a variety of commercial uses. Uh, so this rezoning request is a bit unique in that we're not requesting a change to the zoning district or the uses allowed within the district itself. We're requesting a change to the approved application plan. Um, and so here you can see how the site uh, interacts with the entirety of the area, the 50 acres that were rezoned back uh, in 1998. So this is the application plan that we are amending. Um, so uh, it's a little difficult to discern, but I tried to call out a few highlights so that you could um, identify uh, 
and, and recognize how this uh, application plan has come to fruition over the last 20 years. Uh, so the giant is here and Applebee's here. And then our site is over on this portion here, which um, 20 years ago was not all separate parcels. It was more so divided up into blocks. Uh, and this block was imagined uh, with the original rezoning to actually have a hotel use um, and a portion of which re uh, retail as well. So this uh, 1998 application plan was amended in 2002 uh, to revise the hotel use here to allow for office space. And so that's why today in this location, you see uh, the, the two-story office buildings adjacent to the SunTrust Bank. There is still um, some remaining square footage for retail use in this block um, today. And so, but particularly with this rezoning request, of course that uh, change is to allow for a hotel use on this portion with 125 rooms. So as Andy said, this is uh, located in the community mixed use designation of the Pantops master plan. Um, which was uh, recently reviewed and I believe adopted in, in 2019. Um, you all know that, of course, um, the CAC members. But uh, it's as a community mixed use designation, uh, one of the primary intended uses uh, that, that's imagined in this area is a hotel uh, or slash conference facility. So the proposed use within the uh, community mixed use Pantops master plan designation is directly consistent with the uh, primary uses called for in the master plan. So here's an overview, just a, a concept of what was included in the rezoning application. Um, as Andy went over the timeline, so we, we do not have a public hearing scheduled for this. We just got our first round of comments back on this rezoning application from the county. Um, we're having the community meeting tonight, so we're gathering all this feedback uh, and we'll be working through revisions in our application before we resubmit and, and, move, and hopefully move forward to a public hearing. So here with just the general layout, we're, we're just showing a, a general building footprint um, and the general circulation as well as the right in, right out only entrance. Um, and I think that will uh, be kind of further facilitated a, the, the smart scale funding for this Route 250 corridor is also moving along and the Route 250 corridor ranked very highly for corridor improvements, which uh, hopefully will facil facilitate some um, entrance management as well as a median at uh, this portion of Route 250. So at some point in the future, a, a even though we are proposing a right in right out only entrance that is as long as smart scale funding moves forward, that is likely to be the uh, kind of the only scenario of how an entrance can be realized on this site. So with that um, entrance that we're proposing, of course, there's no left out, there's no going across into uh, directly into TikTok. Um, someone will have to make a right and uh, make a U-turn to come back down 250 to access any of the businesses on the west side of Route 250 with that proposed entrance. And that is all that I have for you tonight and um, looking forward to your questions. And again, like I said, Doug Ellis is also on the call. Um, so uh, we're, we're available and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you all this evening. Okay. Um... Thanks, Kelsey. Thanks, Andy. Uh, at this point, we can start the question and answer period. Um, I think we can start with uh, any members of the CAC who have questions. And then if any members of the public have questions, you can um, post them in the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You should see it down there. Um, there's also a box that says question and answer. You can post in either of those and then um, we can bring you in and you can audio um, ask it to the group. But um, it looks like, I guess to start, Ron, you were raising your hand. Yeah, <clears throat> I, have th I have three questions. Uh, the first one's sort of general, so an, an idea for everybody to think about, but um, 
since we're in a we're in a, a planned growth area and a you know higher density area, uh, why not promote uh, a more pedestrian connectivity here? And I'm assuming uh, the south property line of that site is all retaining wall. Right there. So uh, anyways, my question is, why not provide maybe a stairwell between that and the adjacent property uh, uh, up to, say, say you're in the hotel and you want to walk over to Giant or something like that, you know, you, you can't do that unless you're, I, I assume, walking over all the way to 250 and walking back. Sure, that's a, thank you for that comment. That's an excellent point. And we actually, uh, the, the, the county planners really tasked us with thinking through that uh, more intently with our resubmittal. So um, you, right now, correct, we're just doing a sidewalk right here. However, um, is this the, uh, the location that you were perhaps thinking for a pedestrian? Yeah, yeah, yeah possibly. Yeah, that'd be a great place, probably, because that's the road between the bank and, and the offices there. And it leads over to the shopping center and you, know, if you had a stairwell there or something. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we, we I think that's the, the, the county planners have, have definitely identified that and passed that. And so then I, I appreciate you uh, reiterating that for us to think through as we go through our design revisions and, and our resubmittal. Okay, I have two, I have two more questions. Certainly. The, the area to the, the very south of the site, uh, a butch abuts Carriage Hill? Yes. Right now, the, the right now that is grass and trees. I'm assuming the owner is going to maintain that landscaping there. There's yeah, there's no proposed changes to that. The, the zoning ordinance requires a 20 foot buffer there, and um, additionally, the the comprehensive plan shows that area as parks and green space. So the the design as proposed is is consistent with maintaining that area. Okay, and the third the third question, the last question I have is uh, on the. North of the building footprint and across from the parking area, there's a, a, a bold line, wa a wavy snake-like line. What What is that? Uh, that is a retaining wall. Okay, another retaining wall, okay. All right, that's uh, that's my questions, thank you. Thank you. Um, do any other members of the CAC have any questions? Okay, I see Cal and Sarah. Um, Sarah, Sarah, why don't you go first. first? Okay. Who's going first? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. Thanks, Cal. I have uh, three questions uh, to the developer and the owner. In this immediate area, we have going up very soon, if not already finished and operating, a Holiday Inn Express a Hilton Garden Inn, a Comfort Inn, and on the plans, a Hampton Inn. What justification did the owners uh, use that we needed another hotel? Uh, my second question is, is this a boutique or independent hotel or is this going to be a franchise? And then my third question is, what proffers have you offered uh, to be part of the package of a zoning approval. Doug, are you available to weigh in on the first two questions? I am, yes. And just wanted to start out by thanking you guys for having us here. Uh, this is a really great opportunity to hear from, from you all about your thoughts on the hotel that we can incorporate uh, <clears throat> into, the, into the future plans. Um, and our goal is to is to build something that you guys can be proud of in your neighborhood um, based on your feedback here. Uh, so thank you very much for having us. Um, and Sarah, I believe your first question was about the, the hotels in the area, is that correct? Yes, I wanted to know specifically since there are already four, three hotels, uh, well, two fully operating, one just about ready to open shortly, and then the planned Hampton Inn off of State Farm Boulevard, what uh, justification did you all use that uh, determined that we needed a fourth hotel? Sure, absolutely, yeah, and thanks for the question. Um, understanding those different hotels all serve uh, different market needs and different demographics. Uh, this hotel is a bit different. Um, it's not your standard Hampton Inn or Holiday Inn Express. Um, we see Albemarle County as a, as a great market 
um, for a well, well developed and designed hotel that meets a different need than those that you um, had listed off, but are, are very aware um, that they are in the general area as well and hope to develop a product that's very different from those. What in the world would you ha say would be different from yours than the others since people would simply go there and stay the night? Sure. Um, our hotel actually accommodates a different type of guest as well. Um, while we're able to, to pick up, you know, the, the one to two guest as well, um, we're also able to take extended stay. Um, this is a suites only hotel. Oh. Um, so there, there's a, a very, very different guest and it's serving a very different market segment yeah. um, than the hotels that, you're, that you had listed. So in your case, uh, would it be something similar to an Embassy Suites or an Extended Hotel America, or how do you plan to style this? Uh, sure, and we've, we've shown, um, and I don't know, Kelsey, if, if they've seen any of the pictures, um, this would be a, a very upscale looking hotel. Um, our goal is to take into account the, uh, the ARB and, and your desire for a good looking hotel by using um, hardy plank and brick and stone and making sure that we that we fall into the you know the view shed and the materials that you guys are looking for up there on the pantops area we do not intend to 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 try to you know push through lower cost materials to make it look like every other sweets product that you've seen out there so it would be in the area of say something like a marriott residence inn which is considered on the higher end um, it's, it's a different product than the residence in, but um, again, our goal is, is not to make it look like a residence in or look like an embassy suites. Um, it's a very different look using materials, again, that we believe, um, based on your feedback so far um, and everything that you guys said tonight, um, will fit in much better with the landscape there in Pantop specifically, rather than our goal is to develop and design it. Um, based on the area and based on your feedback, not just take the same product with the same materials and try to try to put it right there. Okay, so what proffers then are you all offering uh, to the area for uh, a potential approval of your, your rezoning? Sure, Sarah and, and Kelsey, feel free to jump in. Um, at this point, we're, we're at the very front end of the process. Um, I don't believe we've offered any proffers or have been asked to um, or had those discussions, but Kelsey, please correct me if I'm wrong there. Sure, so um, at this time, all of the impacts haven't been fully identified at this phase of, of review. And so proffers are typically offered to mitigate impacts. So as we're still working through those, we haven't specifically identified what proffers um, to offer at this point. However, uh, the application plan itself is technically a, a proffered application plan. It is a commitment to build uh, in general accord with what you have shown on the plan. Um, so just, uh, so as far as uh, some level of certainty goes as what a, what design, site design can be expected on the site, the, the application plan uh, does, uh, is, is proffered in, in that sense, in that it is a, a commitment to, to build in a certain way. Thank you. I yield to Cal. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, Kelsey, I, first of all, how many stories will this be? It's proposed at four stories. Four stories. Mm -hmm. How will that affect the view shed from the offices that are uh, above it and the people that are uh, eating at sticks and other area, uh, restaurants within the shopping center? Uh, I'm very, very concerned about view shed and four stories. Certainly, Thank, thanks for that, Kyle. And I think, uh, yeah, we all know that sticks has the best view in town. So certainly, um, don't want to disturb that, but this is, so th this site, um, you know, going down Pantops Mountain here, there is a, a, a good amount of grade chains. Uh, so just between the, the SunTrust Bank and the proposed finished floor elevation of the hotel is approximately 30 feet in elevation change. The, um, and then the auto superstore drops 
another 30 feet to that uh, finished floor elevation. So uh, at four stories, it really, it, it sits below, far below the SunTrust Bank and the, and the um, offices next door. Um, and so if we just do a calculation of 10, 10 stories per floor, it sits at an elevation approximately 30 feet below the elevation of SunTrust Bank. We're only kind of coming up, uh, you know, 10 feet above that finished floor elevation of, of SunTrust Bank. But the, the view shed is, uh, you know, something that's really called out uh, in, in the comprehensive plan. It, it, it talks about that a lot. And so, um, you know, we'll be continuing to work through that and providing whatever models or um, visuals so that we all can better understand how this proposed footprint will fit into the site. Yeah. Uh, do you by chance uh, have any uh, audio visual mock-ups of what the hotel might look like? And if you're not prepared, that's fine. I, I, I'm just yeah, curious. Sure, sure. We do. We shared a few precedent images um, in our ZMA application plan. I don't have those up on my screen tonight, um, but we will be. Um, you know, the, the Margaret Malachewski, the ARB planner with with the county, um, you know, brought up some good comments for us to provide her with some more information, and so we'll definitely be working through that with our resubmittal and, and providing uh, so that everyone can have a better understanding of how this is proposed to, to work in this area. Very good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cal. Uh, it looks like Stephanie's raised her hand and she has a question. So we'll go with Stephanie next. And after Good Stephanie, um, Rob Neal has a few questions. So we'll transition to Rob. Uh, Stephanie. Um, thank you very much, and um, thanks for your presentation. I just one question. I think Sarah had also asked. We were saying you you were saying it wasn't like a regular chain type franchise, like a Holiday Inn or Hampton Inn. Is it a privately owned enterprise, or how was the structure of that of, of this hotel? Sure, Stephanie, and this is Doug. If it's okay, I can take that one. Um, this is a this is a product that that doesn't exist in Albemarle County or really any of the, any of the surrounding areas um, at this time. So this would not be another chain that you've seen already in Charlottesville or Albemarle County. Um, this would be a, a brand new brand new product for this area um, at this time. So it would, would not be something that you already have there in your market. Right, I was just curious, is it privately owned or is it a franchise or, or a national corporation or what? Sure. This this is a it's a franchise hotel. Um, at this point, um, it's a, it's a franchise hotel, but a, a very young um, and hipper franchise than kind of the, your standard you know Holiday Inn or Hampton Inn that you that you've seen all over. Okay, and then you said it was extended stay. Are there limits on this on the stay? Is it people stay months and months, or is there just or is there any restriction on that? As far as will it be long term residents? Um, it's typically not long-term residents. Uh, the average stay is between a week and a month um, in these hotels as, you know, with the data that they have or that we have in Virginia so far. So uh, fewer one to two night stays and, and more longer stays, um, but typically not months and months. Um, okay. And then one other quick question. I wasn't sure, uh, it wasn't clear on the plans as far as whether it be like outdoor recreational activities such as a swimming pool or any other type of um, outdoor activities for the residents and guests? Um, other than the green space, uh, Stephanie, right now there are no, um, no called out, um, you know, specific outdoor amenities. Um, our guest is, is typically using the amenities of, um, you know, the Ravenna Ridge Shopping Center and we, we tend to push them toward local restaurants and um, local amenities versus being in the hotel and using that as an amenity rich um, place since they are, you know, in the community and, and we're staying more than one to two nights. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Rob, um, if you have any questions, we can go ahead and ask those now. Sure. Thanks, Cameron. It uh, kind of follows up to Stephanie. I was just kind of asking too, what the um, what the business model 
projects for the average stay, you said beyond two to three nights. Um, you know, as a local person, is it going to you project the average stay to be less than thirty days? That would trigger the uh, the um, short term, the short stay tax to the locality, or do you project the average stay to be longer longer than thirty days? Yeah, and Kelsey and I have discussed this a bit um, and talked about the short term stays. Um, we're looking at our at our data in the other um, models that we've done across Virginia. Um, these are relatively new, um, but the, the hope is to go over 30 days for the average stay, knowing and, and totally understanding that we have the short term uh, tax to to to, you know, to make sure that we comply with there. Oh, honey. Quick questions. If Rob is finished, Dick, I have a question. If everyone else is, is finished, <clears throat> uh, Kelsey and Doug, thanks for for being here. My question is regarding the the transportation piece, which seems kind of important for this site. And uh, I just want to make sure I understand correctly. The way it's proposed right now is a right turn in, right turn out. And so if I was coming in off the interstate and wanting to come there, I'd be pushed down the hill, find somewhere to make a U-turn and come back. I understand that you're looking at the smart scale project funding as well to kind of maybe help coordinate this effort, but I know smart scale, I guess the timing, or whether or not you even get it, is kind of up in the air. Um, so I guess my question is one, what happens if that doesn't come through? How, do you guys, how are you guys exploring that piece of, trans, of the transportation of the project and if it does come through, how is that being coordinated from a timing standpoint, the completion of your project? Sure, so um, if, it, if it doesn't come through, I mean, the, the proposed entrance on the site will remain right in, right out. Um, just with the additional median in the area, that just kind of provides additional um, a, a surety that uh, it, will, it will continue to function that way. Um, if the smart scale funding doesn't, so if the smart scale funding doesn't come through, it's not affecting the, the proposed entrance design. Um, I don't think VDOT, we, we, we wouldn't get approved for a full access entrance in this area. It uh, has to be restricted given the spacing to Hanson Road. Um, and and I'm, sir, uh, Commissioner Claiborne, if you please follow up with your second question, I just want to make sure I've answered both of them. Yeah, I think it's starting to answer it. I guess uh, my concern at the moment would be um, me coming off the interstate to come to your, your property. Where am I going to turn around? Where are you pushing everybody? Is it to that stoplight at the bottom of the hill where, um, is it Stony Point? Is, is that where everybody's making the U-turn to come back? Or like, I'm just thinking of game day traffic, graduation traffic, and trying to get my arms around the proposal versus the right in right out, which I'm not sure if that's adequate at the moment, just listening to the, the conversation as it's going right now. Sure, sure. Um, so I, I don't, we haven't fully identified a, a, a specific U-turn location or exactly uh, how that would function at, at this point if the smart scale fun, uh, funding didn't go through. So um, I, we'll continue to explore that more and, and come you know, report back to you with a, with a better answer for that. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in here right now and say the smart scale funding did go through for from Route 20 to Volton Road. So that did go through. That was- Wonderful. I couldn't hear that. Could that be repeated? Uh, yes, the smart scale funding for pan tops from Route 20 to Rolton Road did go through. It's been approved for funding. So we will have that. So you will not be able to turn left out of that site or left into the site. It will be right in, right out only. I have a question if nobody else has one right now. I have one, yeah. What's the status of that triangular piece of property that's just south of the site, the Matinee Auto Superstore? <clears throat> the, the question was just what's the status of it, of the triangular piece? Sorry, Kelsey? Uh, oh, sorry, I was just asking. Um, I, 
I just wanted to make sure I heard your question correctly, but I, but I think I did because I heard some nods when I um, asked it again. So the, uh, the, the status of it, there's, I mean, there's no current plans for development on that property. Um, so that, I think that's all I have to report on the status of that. Um, I don't, there's not a, a, a construction plan moving forward uh, on that at, at any time right now. The owner of the motel didn't choose to try to buy that piece of property then? So, Doug, do you want to weigh in? As, are you, did you hear the question? I say the proposed hotel owner didn't try to acquire that triangular shaped piece of property next to him then? Yes, I'm sorry. This is Doug. I, I did hear you. Um, we So, the the, the the umbrella company of, of our company does, we have owned that triangular piece. Um, we currently have no plans to develop on it um, as of right now. But you chose not to make it part of the hotel apparently. Yes, sir. We've owned the triangular piece for several years um, and had no plans to develop a hotel on it. Um, it was an independent site from the from the hotel site or the, from the site that we're discussing tonight. So a, as of yet, we have no plans to, to develop that piece. And it has been a, a vacant green parcel for, for several years now. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Looks like Ida Lee has a question. So my concern, and you might not have gotten down to this level of detail, but I'm really concerned about water runoff on this site. Um, it's a steep slope, as you know, in the rear and with putting in parking spaces for your guest, I'm worried that there could be considerable water runoff. You can already see on the map now where there's mud going into the rear of the auto superstore. I happen to be very familiar with that runoff. So I'm asking what mitigation effects, what, what do you plan to try to do to mitigate the water runoff? So this, uh, this plan will be subject to a stormwater management review um, with the, the most current regulations. And so right now the, the plan is for uh, underground detention under the parking lot. So it will capture uh, the water runoff from the site, hold it for a period of time and release it um, uh, slowly um, so that it's um, not uh, running off un uncontrolled. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be going, we'll, we'll have to adhere to all local water protection ordinance and DEQ regulations with this proposed development, given the proposed land disturbance on the site. Okay, thanks, Kelsey. Okay, um, do any other CAC members have any questions? Trying to uh, pan through Sarah. everyone and see. Uh, look, Sarah, it looks like you have a follow-up question. Yes, uh, I'm back on the Route 250 uh, with the approvals and the surveying uh, going on now. Has VDOT taken into consideration the increased traffic that will come to the intersection of 250 and Route 20? with this proposed uh, hotel or, or are they aware that this hotel is proposed uh, as part of their calculation <clears throat> on traffic flow, especially with another, yet another U-turn at uh, Stony Point and 250. So VDOT, um, VDOT is aware of this proposal. They have weighed in and provided comments to us during this review. Um, and additionally, this site is, is interesting in that it uh, does have some retail square footage available. So it could be um, a, you know, a, a retail user such as a, you, you already have a Chipotle in that area, but I'm using a Chipotle as an example because it generates a lot of traffic. Um, so there is uh, you know, the, there is development potential on this site. We are proposing to change that to um, a, a hotel, which in some instances when compared to retail uh, isn't going to be a, a significant traffic driver. 
compared to that. But to answer your first question, VDOT is aware of this proposal. They have provided comments and they'll continue to, to weigh in throughout the review process. Thank you. Sure. Looks like uh, Supervisor Lapiso Curtly, you have a question or a comment? As I am a liaison, I just wanted to make sure that all the CAC members were able to ask their questions first. I didn't want to butt in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think everyone's asked their questions, so you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to know if you could go back to the previous site where it shows uh, the enlarged area, the green space uh, for the hotel. Uh, back. Yes, okay, okay, nope. Yes, okay, so the area on the left, on the far left, uh, you're saying that that is going to be green space, correct? Correct. And the triangular area that you said you're not developing, is that going to be green space? Well, it's a, it's a separate property and that property isn't subject to the zoning application. So in the sense that there's no development plan for it, it's gonna, it, it's gonna remain as green space, but is it going to be designated as green space in, in perpetuity? Um, it, no, it's not, it's not part of this application plan. It's not subject to the PDMC zoning. That property is actually zoned highly commercial. So um, it, it is not going to be um, any type of protected green space by means of zoning or easements or, or, or dedication to the county. Or, you so know. you're hoping to sell that triangular piece of property in the future for um, development? That, that uh, I'll let Doug weigh in if he would like, but but that that property is slated for development at some time in the future. Sure, and ha happy to weigh in. We we currently have no plans to develop it. Um, it's a, as you know, a much lower elevation and not connected to this property. Um, we we currently have no no future plans to develop that property. So, are you planning a buffer, a tree buffer between? your property in the triangular piece of property. Um, and, and yeah, Kelsey, feel free to, to, to jump in, but there is a landscape buffer there um, around the retaining walls, as you see on the, on the concept design that's, that's up there now. And another question, would you have, um, I was wondering why you didn't um, plan a three-story building that is longer and not have to do a four story? Um, the, the four story building, um, because the site, the way that the site is and the dimensions, the four story building that is shorter um, allows a much, in, in our opinion, a much, a much better uh, footprint there on the site versus okay. a longer three story building. So your develop your site there is actually not part of the whole giant uh, uh, development site. Is that correct? The triangular piece is not. This is the triangular piece. No, 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 no. Where your site is is that part of the whole SunTrust giant DMV? Okay, so that was originally owned by a developer. Correct. Correct. And you bought it from the current developer of that or owner of that site? It, it changed hands from the original developer to um, the, the property owner who'd, who'd owned it for the past number of years. Um, <coughs> that, that owner was not the developer of the property. Okay, do you know who the current owner is? Uh, D well, the current Doug, Doug's company is, is the current owner. Prior. Uh, the the prior owner is the same owner as Auto Superstore. Oh, okay, okay. Um, they, do you have for your site there, is there any connectivity? See where the SunTrust Road is? Is there any connectivity um, to that road from your site? So for the, the grade change for a vehicular connection would be, um, 
impossible to achieve a grade change uh, for a vehicular connection right there. However, a pedestrian connection, um, we, I, I think that's, that's something that we're definitely going to explore with our resubmittal and seeing if we can put a staircase in there to, to bring people up to that sidewalk. I think uh, that would be something that would be extremely important to provide a pedestrian connectivity because if you want people to go into the uh, that shopping center to the restaurants uh, in that area and everything, Applebee's and you know, the other places and the you know nails everything, you're going to need a staircase going up so that the people can walk, especially if they're going to be staying there for you know, a month or so, you certainly don't want them driving their car or what, you know, a block or two. Absolutely. And as Kelsey said, um, based on your feedback and the feedback we received prior to this meeting, that's something we, we absolutely want to look at it and try to figure out. Okay. And I think uh, that answers uh, my, you know, when you say, so would you term this as a boutique type long stay or extended stay hotel? I, I think that's a good way to, to term it. Um, and, and to your point, um, to all of your feedback, um, you know, the connectivity to the, to the shopping center next door, because these are longer term guests, um, we have no on-site restaurant or on-site amenities for the idea that one, because they're longer term guests, it cuts down on the traffic um, that you're speaking of. These are longer term stays, not a turnover every night. And they are eating and shopping and, and using the local in-place amenities, restaurants and grocery stores, et cetera. Um, so that's our hope there on the extended, by having that extended stay product there um, a newer brand, a newer extended stay that the area hasn't seen um, combined with low traffic and um, the use of, of local amenities and local businesses to cater to those guests. So is each suite provided with a kitchen or a kitchenette? Yes, ma'am. Which one? That's uh, a kitchen. A kitchen. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I... With, yeah, with no restaurant amenities, I would think that it would be imperative to add that staircase going up so that people could walk into the um, shopping center. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. We look forward to exploring that with, uh, with Kelsey and, and figuring out the best way to get that. And then when you're doing that, please check. I can't remember. I guess the best line of connectivity would be uh, going through uh, Central and the other building across from it. I can't remember if there are sidewalks or not there because sidewalks would have to be part of it in order to ensure safety. Hmm. That's a good question. What, if I might jump in, what about the rear of the property that connects at the very end of that drive by SunTrust? Yes, you're almost there. Yeah, what, what about a driveway at the end of that site to connect with that road? So we're going through green space, Sarah. Yeah, this, this area it's in, on, the, on the master plan, so it's designated as green space. Okay. Um, and there is a, a proposed roadway connection imagined through here at some point in the future. Um, however, the, the, the just the grade change in this area alone is very difficult for a vehicle to, to make it okay. down here to, to the where the parking area would be. Okay, thanks. It wasn't clear to me when I was seeing it, but thank you. Yeah. Sure, sure. Right. Right. So just so you reiterate that I think the stairway would best be served near SunTrust coming up there. Can I, yes. Yeah. This is, this is Rob Neal. Um, there's a sidewalk that goes straight from that all the way to it. That's you can walk everywhere. I'm, I mean, staircase is great, but the current sidewalk that's already in place on 250 seems to be more ADA compliant than a staircase, anyways, right? Have you seen the condition of that sidewalk? I mean, 
I've never, I always look at it and say, who walks up and down 250? But I think this, that sidewalk's there and it probably will provide really good access. You know, I don't know. The, 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 the speed on 250, though, is kind of, um, um, what is it, depressing for people walking along there? I, I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fall off it, but it's, I'm just saying, not, you know. Yeah, it's not a very, Rob, it's not a very wide sidewalk. Yeah. And the condition of it is uh, problematic. I agree with that. I was just trying to, I have reservations about this, but I'll, that's one thing that is there that are, are planning to date can help this site with, so. But I mean, if with a staircase, they can actually, people can do either. Yeah. There's an ADA problem. They can walk along the side, uh, you know, the, yeah. the uh, um, sidewalk along 250. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm just throwing a bone to the developer. That's, that's there. All right. Well, um, doesn't look like any uh, members from the public have posted any questions in our chat. So, um, if any of the CAC members have any final thoughts or questions you'd like to share, we can go ahead and do that now. Um, otherwise, we can conclude this portion of the meeting. Uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to discuss? No, I... Good briefings. Thank you. And as Andy uh, said, you know, if you do have anything that comes to mind later, feel free to send him an email or give him a phone call and uh, he can answer any questions you may have. If you have questions about when these or when this application gets scheduled for its public hearings with the commission and the board, we can also uh, share that with you as well. So um, just the normal process like we have with these types of proposals. And just uh, wanted to say thank you very much to all of you for your feedback and questions. Um, we, we really appreciate it and look forward to using this information to, to build something that you guys can be proud of there in your neighborhood. So we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, I guess we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Call on Cameron to give us an update on the uh, development throughout the Paint Tops area with the new construction and the projects that may or may not be uh, fully identified yet or whatever. So it's quite a list, I guess. Thanks, Dick. Um, actually, there's not a whole lot of new information to share in terms of any new uh, development proposals that have been submitted to us. Um, the zoning map amendment is really the only brand new thing that we've seen come in since our last CAC meeting. Uh, that said, um, there has been some new activity on projects that had previously been approved. Uh, specifically, if you've been on Peter Jefferson Parkway recently, um, at the back of it behind the hospital, if you recall, there was a, an apartment complex proposed there called the Presidio Apartments at Martha Jefferson Hospital. And they received their final site plan approval back in the summertime. And they've started doing some site grading and installation of erosion control measures. So um, just as a refresher, if you were wondering what that was, that's that project. Um, it's gonna have 250 individual apartment units, a um, hundred of which are two bedroom and 150 one bedroom. Um, they're gonna be spread across, I think six or seven individual buildings and there will be a centralized clubhouse. That said, it's probably a, a little bit ways away before you actually see them um, constructing buildings and putting in the travelways and parking lots because they have some more site grading work to do before that can begin. Um, moving closer down to the intersection of 20 and 250, uh, the site where the um, self storage and the Holiday Inn Express uh, is located, you probably noticed the Wawa building is now under construction. They actually just put up the canopy for their, um, the gas pumps. So they had waited to start construction on the Wawa till they were nearing completion of the hotel and the storage facility, but um, the Wawa is now under construction. Um, aside from that, let's see. Oh, uh, if anyone lives in Fontana, um, there's a neighborhood that we've reviewed and approved. It's a little subdivision, it's not large. It's called Highland Park. And it was uh, originally appro uh, approved as a two-phase subdivision about 10 years ago. 
And the first phase has already been built, but the second phase is about to begin construction. And so that has um, 15 single family detached lots. They're gonna be located on a parcel that is basically surrounded by all of Fontana's either housing or their open space. Um, I, I believe we've talked about that in the past, but if anyone has questions or wants to see a map of where it is, I could email that to you just to give you some more site context. Um, so for development projects, that's really all the updates I had. Uh, the diverging diamond work is still on track and that will be, uh, the utility relocation is supposed to be starting soon if they haven't already started it. I haven't really seen too much uh, work going on out there. I have seen their survey crews and they discussed that with us back at the October meeting, but you will probably see some work actually beginning in the next month or so. Um, and then I did want to give an update on the status of the Sienda property um, zoning violation. Um, if you all recall, that is the property that's along Freebridge Lane where there were some vehicles stored out front that were uh, causing some issues with runoff and such into the Rivanna River. Um, you know, they've been under a zoning violation for some time now. And the solution that staff was able to work out with the owner um, was to have him build an accessory structure behind the home <clears throat> where he could relocate some of those vehicles that were just sitting out in the front yard. So um, the construction of that accessory structure is being finalized right now. It should be complete soon. Again, probably within the next month or two at the most. I will say that according to my colleagues uh, who enforce zoning violations, the owner did um, work with the Department of Motor Vehicles to obtain some antique license plate tags for some of those vehicles that you see out front. And as such, the county can't uh, enforce any rules about moving antique vehicles into that structure. So some of the vehicles that are out front right now will be relocated inside the building, but any of the vehicles that he did obtain those antique tags for, we can't force him to move those. Um, that said, something that I hope will make everyone happy is that the cul-de-sac at the end of Freebridge Lane, which is near this property, we all know that there's been issues in the past with people parking their cars there and just leaving them there. Um, if it hasn't already happened yet, it's going to be happening very soon. Um, we are putting up no parking signs in that cul-de-sac. So I didn't have a chance to drive over there myself today and see if they've already been put up. But Lisa Green, who works in our zoning division, said that it, it's either already happened or it's about to happen in the next you know, coming weeks. So um, that's all I have for this agenda item. If anyone has questions, I'd be glad to answer those right now. Hey, Brad, um, I have one quest, um, a question about those apartments, mm -hmm. the Presidio apartments. Are there any, um, are there any stipulation for affordable housing in there? It will be perfect for people that work at Martha Jefferson who maybe have a lower income that it would be, you know, less footprint and less ability to get to work, et cetera, for people that are, um, um, that potentially need um, some supplement to their housing to help them with, with um, housing cost. Yeah, so that's a great question, Stephanie. Um, the property itself was actually rezoned with the hospital property back in 2003, I believe. So there aren't any proffers that locked that developer and owner into providing affordable housing units like we would be able to do now if there was another rezoning proposal. That said, um, this developer that's doing the Presidio Apartments, he actually does a lot of projects around the county. And um, he uses um, HUD for financing, so the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, and again, when I gave you that breakdown on the number of beds in the units, you know, the majority of the units in that complex will be one bedroom. And so as they've explained it to us, that is their goal is to try and provide housing for um, anyone who works at the hospital or, you know, State Farm or any of the other office buildings there along Peter Jefferson Parkway. So um, they're not going to be luxury apartments that cost, you know, $2,500 a month for rent or anything. Um, I don't have an exact number on what they will be charging, but um, they will be affordable, um, at least, you know. So they'll be within reach for some people, maybe potentially that would be um, able to afford that rent versus, you know, the higher end 20, 20, you know, 
$2,500 a month type thing. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Cameron and Stephanie, if I can weigh in, um, if they're going through HUD and getting um, HUD monies for that, then they will be affordable. May, uh, and I'm not sure, but I know there's another development uh, that we're working with and they're trying to get also HUD funding so that they can go as low as 50% of AMI. So um, that would be, you know, 50, 60, 70, anything below 80, I consider a win. I'd like to get it to, you know, 60, 50 uh, percent of AMI. So um, that, would be, that would be a good thing. I don't know who's the developer on this, Cameron. Um, it's Riverbend Development. Um, so are they doing the RST up on 29? No, they're not doing RST. They are doing um, Brook Hill, which is the larger project that's just south of where RST is proposed. Oh, uh, if any of you have okay. driven up there recently, yeah. it's oh, yeah. those apartment buildings that are under construction on the right-hand side or east side of 29 as you're heading north. Yeah, they, this could be very good if they do deal with HUD because that would provide something for the essential workers uh, there at Martha Jefferson, so. But yeah, I, I, I'm glad you asked that question because I don't remember it coming to the Board of Supervisors and now I know why, because it was part of the uh, 2003 um, Mar uh, Martha Jefferson development. Great, thank you very much, um, both Cameron and B. You're welcome. Cameron, what's happening with the uh, proposed motel on State Farm Boulevard to Hampton Inn? Yes, the Hampton Inn, um, it is still under review in the site plan stage. So they've obtained their initial site plan approval and they've filed their final site plan application with us. Um, we've done one review on the final site plan application and we're waiting on it to be resubmitted. So there's, according to all, all we know, they are still trying to move forward with that, but they have not obtained any final approvals that would allow them to begin construction or start grading on that site. So I can't offer a timetable on when that may occur, you know, if they were to obtain approval, but it is still proposed. When the DMV moves out, what happens then with that uh, piece of property? Any idea? So it's, it's up to the owner. Um, I will say that that property owner did come in for what we call a pre-application meeting with staff to discuss potential development options or redevelopment options. Um, and so that was kind of just an informational meeting. Uh, we provided him with, you know, what the master plan calls for if he were to seek a rezoning or a special use permit for something on that property. Um, you know, he could just keep it as it is and find a new user that could occupy the existing building. Um, there haven't been any formal applications filed with us. And that meeting we had was back in, I think, August or September. There hasn't been any follow-up um, from the property owner on it. So as of now, there's, there's no changes proposed. The DMV is going to be moving out by fall of this year. Um, but I would say, you know, continue to ask me at our CAC meetings because, you know, they do have a sign posted saying it's for sale with some general, you know, uses that could be there. Um, I will say some of the uses that are listed on that sign, I think I mentioned this at our last meeting, it says, you know, this could be developed as a hotel. Um, they would not be able to develop as a hotel right now unless they go through a rezoning process because the property is within that PDMC existing zoning that designates you know, the square footage and the specific use type that can be on the property. So they would have to change that if they wanted to do something like a hotel. Um, does that clear that one up? Yes, thank you. And Cameron, what would happen or, um, if once State Farm moves out? That's also a great question. Um, I would venture to guess that the owner will try and sell the property. Um, you know, that building itself is one of the you know, most unique buildings in the county. I mean, it's one story and I forget how many hundreds of thousands of square feet, but um, you know, if State Farm were to leave that site entirely, they'd probably sell it and then it would probably be redeveloped. Um, we haven't actually had any, you know, inquiries from State Farm or prospective buyers of that site. So uh, any changes there are quite a ways away, I would say, but um, that's another one, I, you know, 
continue to check with me and I can give you updates on if we hear anything. Thank you. Anybody else have a question for Cameron? It's like Sarah's got one. Sarah? Yes, Cameron, uh, there is, I guess, another lot on the plat where the storage and Holiday Inn Express and Wawa are located that I notice is a for sale sign. So does that lot uh, qualify or still be involved in the developers by right or the owners by right? Uh, yeah, so th there is like a fourth property. They subdivided the overall property into four separate parcels. Um, and the one that's at the, you know, if you're looking at the site, it's the front left part. Um, the approved site plans they have don't show anything being built there. So um, if something were to be proposed there, that owner or that developer would have to go through the site plan process with us at a minimum. And if they wanted to, you know, do a use type that's not currently allowed under that existing zoning, they'd either have to rezone it or do a special use permit, depending on what they wanted to do. Um, but there isn't anything that's been approved on that smaller parcel at the front. Okay, thank you. Okay, no other questions, we'll move on. Dee, do you have anything for us tonight? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, wa I wanted to say that um, all of our smart scale submissions were approved which is unusual. So we're really, really happy about that. The only one that was not approved was um, a 29 North, the R cut, what we call an R cut. Uh, so that was not approved, but everything else um, was approved, including <clears throat> the, from uh, Route 20 to Vulcan Road. Um, in the middle of that is what we call a suicide lane that will be removed. And there will be very few places where you'll be able to turn left or, you know, into a business, a uh, couple places, but not very many. Uh, that is in an effort to keep the traffic moving, to keep it um, going, and to make it a lot safer. Um, also, we're looking at, I'm a, on a committee where we're looking at putting a bridge across the Rivanna River, a pedestrian, a pedestrian bridge possibly, but I think bicycle also. <laughs> Stephanie's happy <laughs> to put a bridge. <clears throat> We're looking at two different sites. Uh, so, you know, if that happens, let's keep our fingers crossed that that, that will happen. Um, <clears throat> on Route 22 and 231 going up to Gordonsville, uh, VDOT is doing a traffic count at my request. Uh, we're looking into possibly reducing if we can uh, the speed limit because halfway is from Sh Shadwell up to Sismont Market is uh, 45 miles an hour and then from Sismont Market to Gordonsville is 50 miles an hour. Uh, so we're looking to get everything reduced to 45 for safety reasons. So we'll we'll see what happens um, what happens there. Uh, also on Route 20 and 253, the roundabout was approved. So they will be starting that, I think, uh, this coming year, the roundabout at um, 53 and Prop 253 and um, 20, 20. And that's where, you know, goes into uh, profit and everything. So that will be, that will be very good there. Um, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, uh, sad news, bad news. I was working with uh, CVEC or, or excuse me, CenturyLink to get uh, broadband. That's one of my big pushes is to get broadband um, out in all the rural areas. In the Watts Passage area, that's being put in now uh, in some of the Watts Passage on one side of the bridge that's going in there. Um, but for the Ke Keswick Cobham area, they're not, because of FCC regulations passed this past year, uh, they, you know, they won't be able to put fiber in there. It's going out to bid. This other company may get it. We don't know what's happening there. We're, we're really trying to push getting broadband in everywhere. But the problem is 
it's these separate companies that own the, the, you know, the fiber, the broadband, the connectivity. And so that has nothing to do with the county. All we can do is give some monies to them, which we have done through the CARES program, because uh, I consider, and I know the other supervisors consider having broadband, having good internet access is a health and safety issue. Um, okay. Oh, COVID update. Uh, if, if there was a, it was VAMS, V-A-M-S that we had to sign up for, that's gone now. It's B Blue Ridge HD, um, dot org. So you need to sign up there for your COVID shots. Um, make sure you sign up. Um, we're second in the nation to giving out shots, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that will change. Has nothing to do with the county. It's the health department. It's and it's the state and it's the feds giving us enough shots. And you also have to have people that are able to give the shots because a lot of the people who can give the shots are doctors and nurses, and they're in the hospitals. So uh, they're had, they're dealing with that logistical problem. But please sign up for your COVID shots. Um, and I think that's about all I have, other than the fact that I am thrilled. Thank you, Cameron, for letting me know, um, put it, putting up the no parking signs across from uh, Mr. Sienda's or Kitty Corner to his house. I'm thrilled about that. And uh, I'm sure um, that the local um, tow truck companies wouldn't mind driving by there occasionally and picking up some money. That's all I have now. Thank you. Hey, I can I add one more thing? Just to know that the um, Virginia Department of uh, the Blue Ridge Health District is ramping up with a lot of volunteers yeah. through the Medical Reserve Corps to help with trying to staff that tent more and get more staff ramped up so that we'll, when we have enough vaccine, we have enough staff. That's exactly correct. Uh, they're asking people that are retired to come back and volunteer or you know, to come back and, and work. So they're trying to get everybody that they can. Uh, you know, we have a site that is set up uh, on the K old Kmart parking lot. Um, what you have to be careful for is not getting a shot from what I've been told, not getting a shot in one area and then getting a second shot here, that's gonna mess you up. So wherever you get your first shot, that's where you should get your second shot. I know that people are trying to even go out of state uh, because they heard that in South Carolina, they're giving shots out and everything. Uh, those states I hear, I know Georgia is beginning to close down on regarding people who do not live there. So um, yeah, if you know anyone that knows how to you know, give shots, tell them to join up. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, Stephanie. Anything else for me? That's it for me. Okay, Corey, do you have anything for us? That was such a comprehensive update. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass on that. I don't think I have anything to add. Oh, that's because he's lacking sleep because he has a new baby that was born in December. So tell us all about that, Corey. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Okay, give us some info on the baby. They didn't hear what I heard. Uh, well, she's uh, she's doing good, eating a lot. And uh, she just, she, when she was first born for the first couple of weeks, she had her nights and days flipped around. So that was a little challenging, but that's starting to come back around. And so uh, we're in that space where if you can sleep from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m., you feel like a champion the next day. So that's, that's kind of where we are right now. As a father of five, I know what you're going through. <laughs> okay, uh, the county has just put out the <coughs> schedule for us for the rest of the year. We're scheduled for the fourth Mondays, virtually on every month. I guess tonight is 6.15. Did that work out as a good time frame versus 6 o'clock? 6, 6.15 is fine. Either way, I was going to apologize to the group too. I uh, 
I thought that President's Day was the fourth Monday of February. So I had put on the agenda that we needed to discuss what date we wanted to meet next month. I was incorrect. President's Day is the third Monday. So there's no conflict with our meeting. So okay. uh, we will be meeting on the 22nd um, unless the meeting is canceled for some reason. I would, I would just like to throw this out to the members of the CAC. As you all know, we've been meeting via, uh, via Zoom. Um, when the pandemic is over, which we don't know when that will be, but um, when that is over, is it something that the CACs would be happy to continue if we're able to legislatively, or if we can meet, uh, continue meeting vis-a-vis -vis Zoom? I would personally be very happy with it. Me too. I'm fine with it. I'd rather see you in person, but I'm happy with the Zoom too. I can go either way. I think maybe maybe a blend, maybe potentially, so that we can see each other potentially, you know, since we're so used to being in our own little silos and maybe some being in person and some being virtual, maybe. potentially. Maybe one or something like that. Yeah, maybe a yearly meeting we could yeah. do in person, but um, yeah. I think it allows more people to actually participate. I know our public participation has, has gone threefold since being on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, people, have, even if they don't feel that good, they can still participate and they don't have to go down to the county office. So, okay, I was just, just wanted to pose that. Thank you. We, you know, be just to uh, add to your point, uh, we, our HOA here has been meeting via Zoom. And while we had good public attendance prior to the pandemic, you know, from the homeowners, the Zoom meeting has allowed people to even be more included in the meetings because they could stay in the safety of their own home and not risk going out and getting potentially exposed in, in their own minds. So I think going forward, what we're planning to do is have the board of directors meetings, which are open to the homeowners via Zoom and then the annual meeting in person, assuming that uh, we can resume those. Thank you, everybody. And also uh, welcome to Brian Mason, our newest member. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you all very much. And thank you, Dick. See you uh, in the future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Are you, Cameron. Great job, Mr. Chairman. See you guys later. <laughs> I've done it many times before. <laughs>